Clinton, North Carolina was founded in the early 1800s. A few years later, 1856 to be exact, a grand Greek revival style home was built there on Main Street. That home is now known as the Almond Holmes House, named after the original owner. For the past 161 years, this amazing home has been owned by only two families. But it's time for a change, and the home is now for sale, looking for its next family. Whitfield Tart is one of the owners. He grew up in the house, and he remains a resident of Clinton. Whit has agreed to join us for a short talk about his hometown and his family home. Welcome, Whit. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. You bet. Let's talk about your hometown, Clinton. What can you tell us about it? Well, Clinton is a small town of about eight or 9,000 people located in southeastern North Carolina. We have a pretty downtown that's been revitalized, and most of the stores, the restaurants, and offices circle the courthouse. Uh, the downtown is within walking distance of my home there. Clinton has a great city school system. Also, one of the schools in, is in the neighborhood, and it's only two blocks away. Uh, we have a strong parks and recreation system with lots of programs for adults and children. We also have Coheri Country Club with golf, tennis, swimming, and also a restaurant. We also have three other public golf clubs in the county. Sounds like this. it's a cool old town, quaint looking. I, I mean, I've seen it, obviously, but it's a beautiful little downtown. Uh, you're nicely located. Actually, we didn't say this, but you're roughly an hour drive from Raleigh. We're exactly an hour from Raleigh and an hour from Wilmington. Perfectly nice. situated. So if you want to run down to the beach for a lunch, it, it's a great thing to do. Would you like to switch gears now and talk about the house? Sure. Let's do that. I grew up there. My grandfather had acquired the house from the Holmes family. My grandfather got it in, in the 1930s. We moved there when I was probably eight or nine years old, so I, I practically, I pretty much grew up in the house. It was a lot of fun growing up there. We had a lot of football games in the side yard and that sort of thing. But uh, as time went on, the house does need some some care, painting, et cetera. I believe there are tax credits, to my understanding, offered by the state of North Carolina. Yeah, there is. There's there's financial assistance from the state for renovating historic homes, which is great. And that's offered to us. One of the major changes that the house had was when my grandfather acquired it, he had closed in the back porch. The, there's a porch that wraps around from the front of the house, goes around the front, around the sides, and along the back. And my grandfather closed in part of the back porch to make a galley kitchen and a den to make it a little more livable for them. At the time when it was built, the, the kitchen was separate from the house, as they that's the way they built many of those homes back then. And you would go from the dining room across the porch into the kitchen, but now my grandfather had enclosed it. That would be something that could be restored back to its original ways of having the kitchen outside and um, you could go through a, like a butler's pantry into the kitchen. But that would be something that a new owner could could entertain. Yeah, I think that that would be a nice idea. The reason I understand that the kitchens and houses of that age were separate was a safety issue, right? It, since all the, no, that's the fires correct. were in the yeah, kept the house from burning down. <laughs> you could just burn down uh, the kitchen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can see that my grandfather turned the kitchen into a, a garage and now uh, but it could certainly be converted back if a new owner wanted to do such a thing as far as the rest of the house goes it has some beautiful woodwork throughout the house also one of the uh, an interesting feature of the house is in one of the living rooms my grandfather added a great cluster decorated marble greek revival mantle uh it came from uh place called Pleasant Retreat Plantation that was located near Turkey, North Carolina. But it's got some beautiful 
woodwork, beautiful floors all throughout the house, and has a three landing staircase, which a lot of homes didn't build that. They just built straight staircases. This one has three landings, which is a beautiful feature of the home. Yeah, the house has a grand entrance foyer with the staircase in view at the far end of the foyer and a big parlor to the left and a big parlor to the right with that mantle you just described. I mean, it's really quite an elegant building. Absolutely. And it's a great walkable location near downtown Clinton. Just needs a little TLC. I was going to say also, the, the house sits on a one-acre property in downtown, which is unusual for this location. Also on the property, we have two other houses. My grandfather had taken what was a carriage house, and he converted it into a bedroom and a living room and kitchen for some family. And then as time went on, he added an upstairs. So now we have a three-bedroom carriage house. And then later on into the... uh, later 50s, he built a one-bedroom cottage on the property that eventually he and my grandmother lived in when they got older, and then that's when we moved into the big house. So the property does have two other houses located there, which could be used as rental property, which we uh, we did in later years. One other structure on the house is, called, is an original octagonal smokehouse which was used for smoking hams, and it's still on the property, too. But those are some features of, of the house and the property that are that I love and quite interesting. Yeah, you just uh, taught me something I didn't know. I, I didn't realize that the two-story additional house in the back was once a carriage house. So really, that's an old structure then. It's not a mid-century structure. Yes, it's that's a right. converted and structure. Interesting. One thing I, I love about that house is the uh, the porches, which you've already talked about a little bit, but especially that porch upstairs in the front of the house where you can sit up and look through the columns and see the world from the second floor. It's a, a super cool place to hang out. Yes, we, my wife and I love to sit up there, and, and uh, late afternoon you can hear the church bells from the Episcopal Church, which is just right down the street, and then you can see the church spire from the Baptist Church on the other side of the courthouse, probably half a mile, three quarters of a mile away. So it's a, you got some pretty views, and you catch some great breezes sitting on that porch. It's, yeah, and watch, watch the yeah. world go by. And you can hear church bells chiming, and watch traffic go by, and people go by, and they don't know you're up there, and you enjoying <laughs> Join the breezes. Yeah. Another interesting architectural feature that caught my eye is if people just lose track of these things, I think, over time. But I noticed that the uh, windows that open onto the front porch downstairs are huge, but they also, the area below the windows opens, so the windows almost become doors between the house and the front porch. Is that correct? That's right. There are probably... I think there are two other houses in Clinton that had that same feature, but one side of the house, there there are two front windows that can be, you can raise the window and, and open the small opening wall there and walk through it. As a matter of fact, not that long ago, probably oh, 15 years ago, my mother, when she was living there, she was able to get that open, and so she, she had that open for a while. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, mm-hmm. She just enjoyed having that, and she used to spend a lot of time on the porch, so she really liked that feature. Oh, that's where I would hang out, too, upstairs <laughs> and downstairs. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the porch is great. It's a huge porch. If rain comes, you you can still sit out on the porch and you don't get wet. It's a huge overhang. They don't build those sorts of porches anymore, and it's, it just it's catches wonderful. great breezes all all the time. Thank you. 
the, the house is, as we said, now looking for a new family. It's a wonderful house. It's just a, a very elegant place to live and a wonderful walkable location. It does need a little work, but hey, that can be overcome. So I don't know what else, unless you have any, anything, any other thoughts that you can think of right now that you'd like to share with us? Uh, I, I okay. can't think of anything. It's a great house. It would be great for a, a growing family, too. It's, it's a wonderful place to grow up in. And, uh, and, and huge. Plano is a great city. Lots of great people who live here. Yeah. Oh, and how many fireplaces? We didn't mention that. It has six fireplaces. Fireplace. One, two one chimney, fireplace two in every bedroom and, and one fireplace in each uh, living room. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Okay. Well, I think that will probably do it. Whit, I really I thank you very much for uh, joining us. and I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and memories of the house. And that's all good stuff. Thanks, Paul. It was good speaking with you, and I enjoy, always enjoy talking about the house. Thank you okay, very much. Great. All right, great. This is Paul Setliff with ERA Dream Living Realty, and you've been listening to a discussion on the historic Almond Homes House located in Clinton, North Carolina. Mm-hmm.